Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, lauded the victory of the Royal Endurance Team in Jordan International Championship for general and juniors for the distance of 100 and 120 kilometres that was held in the capital, Amman. His Highness Sheikh Nas noted that the results reflect the status of the endurance sport in Bahrain in international events under the royal patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also said that the Royal Endurance Team participation in the Junior Championship will qualify for the coming World Tournament. His Highness added that the team's dominance in the races enhances the position of Bahrain's endurance sports abroad, especially since the team always competes and achieves positive results in various championships. His Highness also said that the many goals that were set before the tournament had been accomplished, with the team full of readiness for future championships. His Highness pointed out the family spirit that prevailed in the team, as all the members did their best to represent Bahrain abroad. His Highness also praised the relentless efforts exerted by the Jotties and their keenness to do their best throughout the different stages of the tournament, wishing them the best of luck. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was keen on constantly following up with the team through the races, the jockey, Othman al came in first place in the 120km race for the general. In the second place was the jockey, Ahmed Salah Yosef, and in third place was the jockey, Hassam Isam Maki. In the 100km race, a jockey, Mohammed Ibrahim al Zubai was able to achieve first place. After the end of the tournament, the winning jockeys were crowned the first places by Dr Khalid Ahmed Hassan, and the director of the media office of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and Information Centre, Tafik al Salahi in addition to Secretary of the Royal Jordanian Equestrian Federation, Nur al -Rafai. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazia Zainal, delivered a speech during the inauguration of the Parliamentary Cultural Programme, which was held remotely. The Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Humidan, and the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman al Mouayad, participated in the inauguration ceremony. Zainal affirmed that the state's institutions have managed to continue all the programmes effectively during the exceptional circumstances imposed by the pandemic. Thanks to the solid institutional foundation of the Kingdom, which was established because of the comprehensive reforms of His Majesty the King. She also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his extensive efforts during the pandemic. Zanal added that the parliamentary programme stems from the firm belief in the importance of spreading knowledge about the structure of national action in its multiple contexts. For his part, Humidan praised the efforts of the Council Speaker and her continued initiatives to bolster cooperation between the legislative and executive branches. 
in light of the unlimited support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for the youth sector in the government plan and providing them with the opportunity to achieve their aspirations and occupy developmental positions in various fields in the Kingdom. He hailed the efficient leadership of His Highness Sheikh Nasser of the youth towards achieving creativity and excellence. For his part, the Minister of Youth and Sport stated that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa was the first to establish the concept of hope and lay its foundation stone when he delivered an address to the youth in which he expressed his wish that the youth participate in the development process in the Kingdom. The Speaker of the Representatives Council of Isair bin Abdullah Zainal received former Speaker Khalifa bin Ahmed al Durrani. The Speaker affirmed the strong structure of the legislative branch and the development of work mechanisms that began in previous years in the field of employing modern technologies that contributed to continue the work, whether through the continuation of plenary sessions, committee meetings or at the level of implementing the plans and programmes. She expressed appreciation for the high efforts made by the former speakers during the previous legislative chapters, which contributed to the modern history of Bahrain and formed solid foundations for law and tributaries that enriched the comprehensive development march of the country under the leadership of His Majesty the King. For his part, Aldaran expressed gratitude to the speaker for this good initiative that reflects keenness to benefit from previous experiences and to continue parliamentary work, its sustainability and development to achieve the interest of the country and citizens in light of the comprehensive development march of His Majesty the King. Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Asala he at the launch of the King Hamad Medal for Peaceful Coexistence. He lauded the pioneering initiative which he said reflects the drive of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa to promote peace, tolerance, interfaith coexistence and human rights. The King Hamad Global Centre for Peaceful Coexistence had announced the launch of the King Hamad Medal for Peaceful Coexistence to recognise leading international personalities and organisations that support the noble humanitarian values embraced by the Kingdom of Bahrain. Al Saleh praised the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, hailing the pioneering initiatives and projects that support peace, tolerance, openness to others and respect of all religions. He lauded the role of the King Hamad Global Centre for Peaceful Coexistence since its establishment in promoting His Majesty the King's vision, highlighting Bahrain's achievements and spearheading initiatives and programmes aimed to foster the values of peace among youth generations. The Labour and Social Development Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Humaydan unveiled that as many as 107 fund collection permits have been issued to non-governmental organisations, NGOs, during the first half of this year. He said that the ongoing cooperation between the Labour and Social Development Ministry and the government departments in charge of issuing fundraising permits for civil society organisations and NGOs has led to ensuring easy procedures while taking into account the regulatory and security aspects. Humidan stated that the charitable work has been facilitated as a result of the government's directives in this regard, resulting in the increase of approved requests by 94%. He added that many factors have contributed to easing permit issuance procedures, including many of the training of the NGO staff on financial management and their commitment to fundraising laws and regulations in addition to the keenness to cope with the latest technological developments, especially regarding e-payments. The Information and E-Government Authority, the IGA Chief Executive at Mohammed Ali Al-Qaeda, announced the Phase 1 of the National Portal revamp has been launched. The new and improved version of the Kingdom's National Portal, Bahrain.bh, is among the initiatives put forward by the Supreme Council for Information and Communication Technology, the SCICT, to the Coordinating Committee, which approved it. Its scope includes enhancements to the portal's content to improve user experience, update its infrastructure, offer personalised services and encourage e-participation. al qaeda stated that the portal's design, services and features will be gradually developed over several phases until early next year and that it closely follows the United Nations, the UN, e-government standards. Notable features include easier to access information and e-services, management of users' profiles containing personal data as recorded by the government, enhanced user experience over smartphones and increased capacity to enhance user experience and navigation. <coughs> 
The Bahrain International Federation of Business and Professional Women, the BPW Bahrain, has been chosen as the first GCC country to host the BPW International Affiliates Conference and Award. The BPW International's mission focuses on developing the business, professional and leadership potential of women on all levels through advocacy, education, mentoring, networking, skill building and economic empowerment programmes and projects around the world. To speak more about this, we are joined by President of BPW Bahrain, Sheikha Hind bin Salman Al Khalifa. Hello, Sheikha Hind. Hello, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Tell us about the conference and how the BPW Bahrain has been supporting businesses throughout the current health circumstances. Well, it is the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce is uh, organizing this conference to be held in Bahrain in collaboration with the IWEC. IWEC is a global organization based in New York. Their mission is to support uh, entrepreneur women in their business to connect and grow. And uh, they work directly with Chamber of Commerce. And that was BPW Bahrain President, Sheikha Hind bin Salman Al Khalifa. Thank you very much. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,085,083 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, 1,018,988 had taken the second, while 82,481 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 1,248 with 148 recoveries, 74 registered new cases and two deaths. 42 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 29 are contacts of active cases and three are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus. The Embassy of the Republic of Korea in Bahrain, in cooperation with Bahrain's Health Ministry, the Bahrain Businessmen's Association and the Korea Health Industry Development Institute, the KHIDI, held a medical partnership forum 2021 between the two countries. The forum comes to highlight the importance of extending the bridges of communication between the two friendly countries in the health sector in order to explore the available investment opportunities and enhance the steadily growing constructive bilateral cooperation at the official and private levels in conjunction with the initiatives to develop the health sector in the Kingdom and learn from each country's experiences. To talk more about this, we are joined on the phone by the Ambassador of the Republic of Korea in Bahrain, Mr. Hai Kwan Chung. Hello, Mr. Chung. Hello. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Tell us more about the forum and how it can further bolster joint cooperation in the medical field. Yes. Uh, uh, thanks for having me and uh, your kind interest. As you know, the Korea and Bahrain has maintained the solid partnerships in the healthcare sectors, including SEAT program on IT-based health insurance system currently being introduced to Bahrain. And uh, based on the existing cooperation, the 2021 Bahrain-Korea Medical Partnership webinar has aimed at expanding and harvesting substantial business opportunities. In this context, the event comprised two sections. First one is the informative section on market and business opportunities. And the second one is business to business consultation, so-called B2B consultation. More specifically, in the first section, Bahrain's health market and policy, investment merits of Bahrain were introduced. Also, Korea's medical travel opportunities and the Bahrain's visiting doctor program were explained for the stakeholders. I believe that Korean businesses were deeply impressed by the openness and best potentials of the Bahrain's health market. At the same time, one of the highlights is the recognition of the rising trends of Middle East patients visiting Korea and Korea's highlight 
between Korea and Korea's high level medical services are available for Bahrain people along with Arabic translation and halal food. In the second section, we have organized multiple business to business consultations between Korean companies working in the health sector with its count their counterparts from Bahraini businessmen and investors. The bilateral meeting segments included dozens of Korean companies and the hospitals, ranging between top Korean hospitals and companies such as the Asta Medical Center, Seoul National University Hospital, SK Bioscience, and many others. Personally, I put more emphasis on the second section because since I came here, I have met many Bahrain medical companies and hospitals and hold their strong desire to work with the Korean counterparts. Of course, this one-time event cannot quench all the thirsty, but I believe it was a good starting point to materialize our potentials in the health sector. I do see the fruits of this webinar being harvested in the upcoming future. One more point. Healthcare sector is becoming more and more important in bilateral cooperation and especially so in the corona pandemic period. We all observed how essential and vital to establish an excellent healthcare system and strong medical industry. I'm delighted that our embassy was able to contribute to this crucial sector and to hope and believe it will spread to other areas too. The embassy will continue to work on leaving no stones unturned to reach our full potential in our competitive partnership. Taking this opportunity, I would like to express my gratitude to all the people who make this meaningful event realize, especially Bahrain health ministry officials and medical industry people. Thank you. And that was the ambassador of the Republic of Korea in Bahrain, Mr. Ha Kwan Chung. Thank you for joining us.